YouTube is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. What a game developers are forcing anti-aliasing on us uh, in AAA titles. Now, this isn't a problem in single player games. I really have a problem with this in multiplayer games. If you're interested in disabling anti-aliasing in modern FPS titles, this is the video for you. Would you like to be able to turn this in this? If so, follow through with the video. A lot of game developers are getting lazy nowadays. They're relying on upscaling um, technologies like TAA, anti-aliasing and stuff like that to sort of hide and get away with like not really making decent games decent textures stuff like that it's really really infuriating and frustrating especially if you're a mouse player where you actually kind of need to hit your shots track your target and see what you're shooting at a lot of these technologies which is kind of forced upon us on games uh it's sort of like a blur it's not very nice even a blur in motion um taa at aliasing should never be a thing i never ever be forced on in an fps title at all in my opinion Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys how you can turn that off. So uh, link is in the description. Go to Linktree. You'll find my GitHub in Linktree. And this will take you to GitHub. Or you can just Google my GitHub. Go ahead. Go to this, this is the main page here. We'll click disable anti-aliasing. It's a really nice extensive guide here. If you guys don't want to follow through the video and just quickly read it. Um, and if I miss anything in this video, everything is documented in here. You guys can check that out. Now, unfortunately, the AMD guys are sort of out of luck. You need a DLSS supported game to do this and a DLSS supported graphics card. So that would be 2000 series and up, unfortunately. Right, so what does this do? It actually replaces a DLSS file, with the developer's version, which probably shouldn't have been leaked, but it got leaked and gives you the option to toggle debug keyboard shortcuts, right? So this won't work with all games. Some anti-cheats will block it. Use it at your own risk with the anti-cheat. I haven't been banned at all yet. I've tried it with a lot of different titles. Um, I've tried it with the finals. The anti-cheat just blocks the file and so you can't actually select the LSS in game at all or DLA, which unfortunately is a bit of a shame because the finals, I mean, that game is quite nice, but it's stupid that they force anti-aliasing on us. Uh, works with Call of Duty. Uh, so that would probably be like, I'd imagine all the Call of Duties. I haven't tested with two, but three definitely works. I don't think anyone's playing two anymore. And it works with Battlefield 2042, but there's a bit of a caveat to that, unfortunately. The sort of standard method only works. And standard method, unless you can, the game has native DLA, it's not a native resolution. So I'll, I'll go a little bit more in depth with that soon. So yeah, basically it's giving us the ability to disable anti-aliasing in modern games that have DLSS or DLA support, right? Um, and you only really need to use this for games that like you can't disable anti-aliasing. That's the whole point. The original guide was from the hybrid on Reddit here. Go check that out. Okay. And there's a more in-depth DLLA, DLSS modding and information um, guide from Amuse here. But his guide specifically doesn't provide the developer's leaked version of the DLSS file. Uh, just if you wanted to get into more like um, modding DLSS, he's got a really, really good guide to here. Go check that out. Right, so what is DLSS? Unfortunately, the main DLSS page from NVIDIA doesn't actually explain much and it's a whole bunch of nonsense. So go have a bit of a read of this and this if you want to understand how these technologies work. All right, and there's a little bit of a guide on Wikipedia here if you don't quite understand. Long story short, it is just an upscaling technology with AI training algorithm, right? Um, realistically, what it's actually doing is you have DLSS on, these are the presets. You're not actually running at a native resolution. So that's how you're getting more frames. And it's using an upscaling AI technology with a sharpening filter to try to make the game look a little bit better. I'm not a fan of this technology. I'm a big fan of it if you're using 4K or 8K. And I'm a big fan of it for people that have lower end graphics cards that are playing single player games. But in multiplayer FPS games, in motion, DLSS does not look good at all okay in a still image dlss looks quite nice in motion it is actually quite blurry but anyway that's a bit of a rant i won't keep going on too much um here's the guide here standard method and advanced method i'm just going to rush through it and in the end of the video i'm going to show you guys some latency and frame rate benchmarks uh, between the two so you can decide whether you want to try using it or not all right what you want to do is scroll up to the top of the web page here click code click download zip go to your downloads folder all right we're in a downloads folder right click extract here or extract files open the folder we're good to go i have a script in here to unblock the files because microsoft will probably block these files that you've downloaded just to avoid any issues please run it okay you might have a uac prompt come up for you guys if you have uac on that's okay let's go ahead and press yes windows will just ask if it's okay to open a file press enter here okay so we've got two options we've got advanced and standard they're using the same developer dlss file this is the file here all right they're both using the same but the advanced method gives you some more options okay 
And there will be a use case in some games where the advanced option isn't working. The game's ignoring these two files, but only using that file. And if that is the case, we're stuck using the standard option. All right. So to avoid any issues, go ahead and run DLSS indicator. This will just allow us to see the indicator in game down the bottom left. So we know what keyboard shortcuts we're changing for the standard version when you want to remove it. That's a way to revert it and turn it off. I strongly believe in having the option to revert everything back to factory. So that's why that's been included here too. All right, now go to advanced and we'll run signature override. This will allow us in the games that will let us that the anti-cheat isn't blocking, be able to actually modify the config for this file with these two files here. So let's try the advanced option first. I'll show you both. Okay, we wanna grab these three files we want to go to our game folder. Specifically, one of the games we're doing for this video is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Here's the game folder here. There's a problem. This file isn't here. We need to replace this file. So we need to actually go to the game X's location. But some games might have it in a different location. Specifically, specifically for Call of Duty, the location is actually in here. And as you can see, this is a file that we're going to be replacing. So we're going to copy these. I'm going to paste them in here. All right, replace. Now we'll open the Battle.net launcher. Have a bit of a look. As you guys can see there that the game just did a little bit of a scan and repair. This is a problem with some game launchers. They're verifying the files before use. So it may have actually just replaced that DLSS file, then it wouldn't work. So my advice is for game, some game launchers, you're going to have to open the game launcher first, then transfer the files, then launch the game, right? Because at the moment it wouldn't work if we launched the game because it just verified, scanned and repaired it automatically. So we'll just go back in here and replace these files just to be safe. Okay, and unfortunately with Battle.net, you're going to have to do this every time on boot, but I've documented that in the GitHub. So we'll go boot up the game. All right, so now that we're in the game, and we've got the files loaded, everything like that, we need to go to the options, graphics, okay, go to quality. The advanced option, I'd really recommend using DLSS. So we hit, hit DLSS, hit apply. Now it doesn't matter, if the advanced option is working, it doesn't matter what this is set to. All these profiles are set to one-to-one, -to -one, so it's actually going to be native scaling, so that doesn't matter. Okay, now we should see text down the bottom. All right, and we can actually remove this text by either uh, the registry revert or actually editing the um, DLSS tweaks.ini file. Um, that's documented in GitHub if you want to go check that out. Right, so this is how the game sort of like looks like. Um, what we want to do is we want to um, toggle a de jitter debug a none. So that's control alt and then F6 twice, and that's anti aliasing off. Okay, so it's a hell of a lot clearer. Now, what we want to do also is I'm gonna go into the options and graphics and play around with the sharpening, right? That's going to be quite nice. So now you'll have sharpening without anti-aliasing. It'll actually be quite a clear image. I would do some frame rate and latency tests at the end of this video if you guys are curious. Um, now, if the game doesn't have a DLSS sharpening or DLLA sharpening option, you may very well actually see down the bottom left a sharpening option. I'll show you that in Battlefield a little bit later. That would be Control, Alt, and F7 to toggle sharpening on and off, which is quite nice. Now, I will show you guys the DLAA option as well, but unfortunately, we're going to have to just change back to the standard version. See, if I switch to DLAA, it actually like disappears. It actually doesn't work. So we kind of have to use the standard version for this and delete the other two files. But I'll show you guys that right now. So we use the standard option. This will work better with DLLA because it'll be one-to-one -one native scaling. Um, with specifically with the COD, for some reason, we're going to have to delete like the files that were from advanced. There'll also be an extra file created, which is called DLSS tweaks log. We're going to be delete that one, that one, that one, and that one. If you guys screw up and delete the wrong files, don't worry. Just scan and repair your game. So I've deleted those files. Now we just want to use the standard version. All right. So I can show you guys DLLAA in game. Right, so I'm going to put that in there and go ahead and hit play and I'll show you guys in game. All right, we're in game. We've done the standard fix. Okay, so we want to actually go into the game and we want to set this to DLAA. This would be the best way. Uh, and the, the game has to support DLLA standard version. You can use DLSS with the standard version. It's not very good. I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, now we've got the, the developer sort of options down the bottom there. Um, I will start off with DLLA at no sharpening. Okay. Now, 
If you've got the sharpening in game, you won't see the sharpening option down the bottom left in the little um, debug text menu. So we want to I'll toggle um, jitter debug none, control alt and F6 twice. Okay, and anti-aliasing is off, which is nice. And we'll toggle the sharpening. All right, we'll turn that up, make it look nice and crisp. And there we have it. So that's another way of doing it. Now, the standard version, this, this will either work or won't work with games. Or the advanced version won't work and you it'll be revolting uh, reverting to this standard version and that might very well happen you might use the advanced option but it's only they're reading the one file and using the standard option and i'll show you what that would look like right here and unfortunately that happens with battlefield 2042 as well so basically you know it'll be using dlss but we'll be stuck with the presets unfortunately because it's ignoring the dlss tweaks in your file as you can see, it doesn't actually look quite nice and there's some artifacts and stuff like that. And here's why. Look down the bottom left. As you can see, DLSS mode is at quality, so it's not forced DLAA, right? Because that's technically what it, the whole point of it is doing. And as you can see, the render resolution is 1280 by 720 and it's upscaling to 1920 by 1080. So we, unfortunately, with this method, we are stuck with these presets and there's no way to set it to one-to-one. -one. There's no real bypass. Battlefield specifically, you can change the render resolution in the, the console um, the console command. So I'll show you guys how you can do that. But as you can see here, if I go change that to sort of ultra performance, you'll see the resolution 980 by 544 upscale to 1920 by 1080. So it's not a very good, not a very good fix. I can see a lot of artifacts on the screen on your end with OBS, not so much on my end, but there are, there are some artifacts here. Um, so yeah, that's basically the standard option really works best with just DLAA. So what I'll do now is I'll boot up um, Battlefield 2042 and I'll show you guys the, sort of the same method. Um, and I'll specifically use the advanced option to show that only the standard option works. All right, we're in the downloads folder, all right, with uh, the, the guide. We'll go to advanced and we want to grab these three files all right, in the Battlefield folder. Uh, it's quite nice because the Battlefield folder by default is just the main root folder. We can see here so what we're going to do is we're going to put these files in here now it will replace the file for you guys i'd already done this before but it would actually replace that file now we'll go ahead and boot the game let's do that now all right we're in the game we've done the advanced fix and so this is what the game looks like natively right okay so we're going to go into options display scroll all the way down unfortunately like this game doesn't have dealer aa so we kind of stuck with the standard method um and it is actually blocking the advanced method, I believe it's the anti sheet that's blocking it, but it's still reading the DLSS file. So we're kind of stuck with these presets. So if we're stuck with these presets, obviously you'd want to use quality because that's kind of like the highest, right? So it won't go back. And now we should see the little text down the bottom. Now, unfortunately, there's a big mini map in the way, so it's probably hard for you guys to see. As you can see down the bottom, we have jitter debug set to numb. So I obviously want to toggle that. All right, we'll toggle that. Um, Control Alt and F6 twice. Now anti-aliasing is off, but it just doesn't look very nice. And here's why: because we are stuck with the DLSS preset, which is 1280 by 720 upscale to 1920 by 1080. There's also a sharpening option here, as you can see, because the game doesn't have a DLSS sharpening slider. So we can toggle that on. Control Alt and F7. Control Alt and F7. That will just turn it on. Unfortunately, it's only on and off. You might be able to play around with it. In the config file that's kind of documented in GitHub, if you guys want to go check that out. Now, how do we get this sort of looking native? Because see, at the moment it's kind of almost there, but it's not native resolution. It doesn't look very nice. So, what we can do with this specific title is we can go to the console command. We can type in render. I mean, render resolution. So, render resolution scale. We can set that to 1.5. All right, and now down the bottom left, it might be really small text. It'll be hard for you guys to see. Right, as you can see, it is 1920 by 1080 upscaling to 2880 by 1620. So it's sort of the only way to sort of get it looking somewhat native. So just to show you guys, now it does cause some artifacts, unfortunately. So it's not really like the greatest, but look at the texture there just of the player model. It's actually clear. This is what Battlefield would look like if it had anti-aliasing disabled. Now, strangely enough, I see a lot of like screen flickering through OBS game capture, but I actually don't see as much of it on my screen. Um, but yeah, so that's unfortunately, it might not really be viable for you guys in, in Battlefield, unless you're fine with using a DLSS preset, right?
the sharpening filter. And for some of you guys, you might want to try this because like you might get some more frames with the DLSS method um, with disabling TAA and anti-aliasing. But it's very, very interesting. So yeah, the rest of this video, I will just do a quick benchmark for latency and frame rates on Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 2042 just to show you guys the performance difference and to see whether it's worth using it or not. Um, long story short, I think the results are going to come down to Battlefield won't really be viable with uh, changing the render resolution for a lot of people um, and DLAA in Modern Warfare 3 won't really be an option for a lot of people. I've tried this in some other games um, like uh, the finals unfortunately the anti cheat just blocks the file entirely. If anyone can find a workaround or is able to digitally sign or edit the file to sort of spoof it into thinking it's the same DLSS file that'd be cool like let me know and also let me know in the comments down below uh, what games work and what games don't work i'm really curious i'm more interested in sort of fps multiplayer titles if anything but like obviously this would work flawlessly for most single player games that have dlss and anti aliasing forced on all right let's get to the benchmark Game developer